There we go, and my light. Hey everyone, Susan Camfield here with SueStamfield.com. Happy May 4th. May the 4th be with you. Um, all week this week in my Sue Stamfield group, we are having fun with the new Stampin' Up! In Color in Colors. And today was the start of the new catalog. Woohoo! So uh, it is live. You can order the products and the catalog. It feels like we've been waiting forever for this to happen, and I'm so excited. Today is the day. So today we're going to make a fun card with the In Colors. Now, in my last video, which was on my YouTube channel, we did a card that... Um, uh, we did a whole set of cards. Each card had featured one in color. Tonight, we're going to be making a card that has all of the in colors on the same card. So um, let me go ahead and flip the camera and we'll go ahead and get started. So uh, here we go. See my ceiling and my light there. Nice, bright, trying to up the lighting lately because, you know, lights are good. There, I'm going to add a little bit more. So these are the new Stampin' Up! In Colors. Drop me a comment and comment uh, below and let me know what your favorite is. Um, we have Fresh Freesia. Okay, did you notice I'm wearing, this is as close as my wardrobe comes to Fresh Freesia, which that's pretty close, right? I love that color. Um, Fresh Freesia, Pale Papaya, Polished Pink, Evening Evergreen, and of course, Soft Succulent. And this is just such a beautiful, soft, soothing, calming green. We've got the rich um, evening evergreen. That's going to be great for masculine cards, for pine trees, forest, um, outdoor cards. Polished pink is just absolutely lovely. I think this will fill a nice niche that was um, needing to be filled in our color line. So I'm very excited about this color too. Um, Kathy says soft succulent pale papaya. Pale, pa pale papaya is a lovely color. It's got a little bit of a peach and yellow tone to it, but it's not like too peachy, if you know what I mean. Um, so it's, it is a very nice, soft, subtle color that is quite lovely. And then of course, fresh freesia. Rosemary, that's your favorite. Yeah. Well, as you can tell, I'm really loving the Fresh Freesia. So tonight we're going to make a card and we're going to use some of the In Color products. Oh, my whole light decided to just tumble on the ground there, but it, I caught it. Sorry about that. All right, so we have the In Color uh, Designer Series paper. So this is going to be loud and crinkly. I apologize for that. But I'm just going to take it out of the package here. And um, when you order this, you get a lot of uh, pattern paper in each of those colors. Now we have these pattern paper packs for all of our other color lines, but because our other color lines have 10 colors in them, you don't get as many uh, sheets as you do in this one. And you actually get two patterns. So I'm counting here. So you get four sheets of this pattern, which is a little flower on one side, and you flip it over and it's got the, um, I don't know what we call that, kind of a, is it a plaid? Is it an argyle? Something like that. Um, and then the other pattern is this kind of um, dash dot pattern, I guess I'd call it. Sort of lines with little circles. And then here we have some kind of circly squares. They're circles, aren't they? Uh, no, they're kind of an octagon shape. Whatever. They're pleasing and attractive to the eye, right? <laughs> so we're going to use some of these papers tonight. So if you're looking at investing in a pack of designer paper and you don't get, want to get one for every, um, every one of the color lines, uh, just know you get a little more um, color, a little more of each sheet um, each color when you get the in color packs because the in color lines have just five in them. So um, tonight we're going to make a card and we're going to use this bundle, which I've been using a ton. Uh, this is the Quiet Meadow Bundle. So let's just do a little recap of my last cards, uh, my last video, because it's going to be similar. The last video I made this set of cards. And with the beautiful shimmer vellum, which we're also using again tonight, and this quiet meadow bundle. 
And so you can see all the different uh, cards there. I used the Elegant Faceted Gems. Oh, I lost one of my Elegant Faceted Gems. It just flew right off my butterfly. Well, didn't go far, fortunately. When you're working, I'm finding when you're working with this vellum, um, it's a little bit like, kind of like sticking something on plastic. And so when you have something with a glue dot, you really need to press on the item and kind of uh, get that glue to just sort of activate. And obviously I didn't do it on that one. So um, so those are the ones that we made last time. We're gonna use this same die today and this same greeting. So let's grab our, um, our dies here. So these are the meadow dies and they are bundled with the Quiet Meadow stamp set. Um, now the stamp set, the greetings fit nicely in the label. We're gonna use this one right here. The same one I used on my last card too, love it. We're gonna go thinking, thinking of you again because thinking of you is just, you know, that just works for so many things. Your Too Kind would also fit nicely in there. And then this little love perfectly fits in this cute little tag die. The rest of these dies I would call standalone dies. Um, they are like a silhouette of different flowers and leaves. And uh, there's even a half butterfly here. And then these little uh, pieces that can be used to um, uh, add detail to the flowers or um, uh, little things on your card. So um, we're going to use this one right here. And that's it for this set of dies for this card. So what I was saying about these being standalone, these are made to cut silhouettes. They don't necessarily match any stamp set. So these dies, you could just order the dies um, if you didn't need the greetings to go inside. But there's some other fun things in this set that we'll play with here. So I have my label die and my butterfly, and I've actually done a little pre-cutting tonight. Um, I know most of you know how to die cut. We are going to cut one thing though, so if you're not super comfortable with that, I will be showing you that. Uh, but some of the things are already done, just to speed things along. So, um, so we talked about the... Um, some of the products there and the ones that we're using tonight. Now there also are more. There are the Stampin' Blends um, in all of the in colors. And some of these are already on back order, um, but go ahead and order them, put them on your order and Stampin' Up! will mail them to you when they get in. If we get so many people ordering them that our back order um, threshold has gotten too high, they'll actually turn that ordering number off until they get more back in stock. So don't be alarmed if that happens. These are the Stampin' Blends. You can also get a, a set of regular markers in all of the colors. The blends come in the two packs, so you've got the light and the dark. Dark. And with those, you can do um, just some really delicate, fun coloring and shading by using the light and darks, um, that, like on that. So it depends on your preference on whether you like to color or not, but just to kind of let you know on some of the in-color options. And there is... Um, a very cool uh, in color jewel that we'll be talking about in just a minute. So I'll show you that shortly. I'm going to set the stamp set aside as well. Let's go ahead and start with our card. Um, I actually didn't even write down the measurements for this card because it's pretty basic. It's pretty, um, uh, pretty straightforward. So our card base is your standard eight and a half by five and a half. Rosemary says she loves to color. I'm right there with you on that, friend. I love to color as well. Um, sometimes I don't have time though. So uh, in those situations, it is nice to have another option. Uh, but some people I know don't, they're not a fan. So my card base folded there, and then I have a piece of a basic white cardstock, and this is four by five and a quarter. So you're kind of your typical layer, right? And then we have some of that in color paper that I just showed you. Now these are cut at, I believe, one by three, but let's, <clears throat> I'm going off my memory. Now this was a card we made as a, as a make and take for my Stampfield Stars Divas. That's my team of demonstrators. These are uh, passionate paper crafters that love Stampin' Up! products, wanted to get it at a discount, um, so they joined my team. Some of them, a few of them, do do this as a business, so they do classes. Yep, it is one by three. Or they do um, 
in-home parties or they have a blog or they make cards and sell them to their family and friends and others just enjoy having that discount so um, this was a project that we made so these pieces were cut one by three now you can see that I took the butterfly die from our meadow dies and I placed it on my paper and I lined it up so that I was lined up right with the the edge of the paper was lined up with the center of that butterfly die and then I cut out half a butterfly now as I said I did this for my team <laughs> and I'll show you these are all I have these all left over so my next job is to come up with a, a fun creative card using these little leftover pieces and if I flip them around I can make a full butterfly it's just the butterfly will have two different patterns on each wing which I think is kind of fun so uh, stay tuned I'll see what I come up with on that um, so one nice thing because this uh, because designer paper is a lot thinner than cardstock I was able to actually stack them and cut out two pieces together at a time that just kind of sped things along a little bit um, so so that was how this piece was done and then I cut out the butterflies from the shimmer vellum let's see if I hold this up you know if I put it on white I think it'll show a little better to see that shimmer it's hard to tell on camera let me bring this light a little closer can you see the shimmer on that it's so pretty oh look I have ink on my finger what a shocker that is <laughs> um, I swear I didn't even do any stamping yet today how did I already have ink on my finger and then we have the so succulent can you see that shimmer it's uh, a little more pronounced I would say on the lighter colors but it is just lovely so that's the shimmer in color vellum you get a two 12 by 12 sheets of every color you can imagine how many butterflies I could get out of those big 12 by 12 sheets a lot right so um, so we've got our butterflies and because it was the vellum and vellum is even thinner than the designer paper I was actually to, able to cut three out um, at a time um, just by stacking it together so just know that if you have a lighter weight paper sometimes you can get away with um, doing more um, cutting more pieces so I'm gonna grab and do our stamping here let's set that aside we actually don't even need the butterfly die because I already have those cut and I'm just going to take my scrap here and I'm going to stamp my greeting and I'm going to use polished pink for that And I have some dogs tearing upstairs. I hope you can't hear that. <laughs> Our male dog, when he goes outside and he comes back in, he has to just run upstairs as fast as he can. I don't know why. I've never asked him, but it's always his full speed. All right, we're going to close up our ink pad. Now I'm using the polished pink for this. Um, I think you could probably change that up. I think you could use different... Um, uh, you know different in colors and arrange the papers differently um, pink was what I did on my sample and that's what I'm going to stick with but we can decide later what we think about that you know what I am I'm having one of those days where I'm making a mess so <laughs> I'm going to clean this stamp up because I'm dealing with a lot of white paper here and I can just see me dipping that right into the paper so love my stamp and scrub it's a great way to clean up your stamps all right so we've got this all set we're going to die cut this so let's slide everybody over and make room to bring in our stamp and cut emboss machine right here i should be using the mini one because this would easily cut on the mini and would take up less desk hmm i might have to do that next time all right so we're going to take our label die and I'm just, um, I did stamp first. It's much easier to stamp first and then, um, and then do your cutting instead of cutting it first and then trying to line it up, in my opinion, unless you're using a, a clear photopolymer stamp, but this one is the orange rubber. Um, so once I have it straight and where I want it, I'm going to just put my post-it note over it so that um, it's holding it in place okay so we're going to go ahead and take our top plate here 
and send this through. I'm gonna tell you something else about, about that and I, it's gone, don't remember. It'll come back to me. All right, so we've got that die cut. I'm gonna just take my post-it note off here and pop this out. And then I've got um, these little pieces that I just will pop out that give it this kind of fun scalloped edge. And then it also added that stitching. Whoops, one stayed around. All right, so there we have our, um, our little label all set to go here with the thinking of you. Now, oh, I remember what I was gonna say. Now, when I did this set of cards and I stamped the greeting, I actually stamped it over to one side and left room to attach the butterfly. This card, I don't need to do that. So now we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna bring that four by five and a quarter piece back in. I'm gonna take a second to put my die back where it belongs so that it doesn't get lost. And then we're gonna take our designer paper that we cut our half butterfly out of, which I did do in advance, and we're gonna go ahead and just adhere those to the piece of cardstock. So I'm gonna adhere it all the way to the left side and I'm gonna lead just a tiny bit of white at the top. Now I'm gonna use my seal for this. You can use liquid adhesive or the stronger seal plus. I am not gonna put any adhesive here. If you were using liquid adhesive, you certainly could, but I can't really do that with my tape runner. So, so I'm just going to Lay that on there. I'm not really gonna press it down. I'm just laying it on for now. That way if I need to do any uh, little adjusting, um, I'll be able to, hopefully. <laughs> so I'm just leaving, I don't know, what would we call that? A skosh, <laughs> a tiny bit, a small amount of white space showing between the pieces. What's nice about this is it's forgiving um, because I'm gonna be putting white on white. So if I have a bigger white border at the bottom, nobody's gonna know, right? It'll be our little secret. They won't notice once we layer it on the card. And if I have no white border at all at the bottom, again, it's layering on white. So like, they're not gonna notice that. And just pop that one into place. And then our last one here with the Evening Evergreen. Is right there. Okay, I've got a little bit more gap than I want. So I'm gonna pull that one down a little bit more. All right, so we've got our strips on there. I'm happy with that. I have a little bigger piece of white at the bottom, but nobody's gonna know once I get it on the card. So I'm gonna go ahead and press that down. And now I can add the butterflies. Now, when you add your butterflies, I think it's fun to make them fly, right? We're used to butterflies flying. So we're gonna just fold this butterfly in the middle, just gently, just a slight crease. I don't wanna fold them in half. I just want it to, look like those leaves are just coming right off of the paper. So that is going to be attached right there, and I'm gonna attach that with a glue dot. So, sorry, that was one of the dogs hitting the stopper on the door. Uh, might be mama dog when she wants something, that's what she does. <laughs> oh, hopefully you didn't hear that. I don't know, you might have heard that, so. My husband and son are here, they can uh, attend to the dogs, no, no, no worries. All right, we're gonna fold this one now, make this one fly away. Yeah, Teresa, it is a really nice label. I, I totally agree with you, I really, I'm using it just a ton. Um, and I love this butterfly, I've been using it a ton as well. 
So we've got our evening evergreen. Let's go to our, we're just matching up the colors here. So again, we use the designer paper for that. So we've got that fun little pattern. And then for the butterfly, we're using the shimmer vellum. Now, if you didn't have the designer paper and you wanted to do the same card and use little strips of the cardstock, you certainly could do that. Um, I would just then take a small stamp image and stamp tone on tone on the paper, and that would be another option. But it's really cute with the pattern paper. All right, so there we've got our polished pink uh, butterfly in place. Let's go to our fresh freesia. And I'm sure you can guess that I'm going to be adding an embellishment to the center of these butterflies because, you know, we don't want any naked butterflies. That wouldn't work. I'm going to press that down. And fold this up here. All right. And we'll put it right there. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and adhere this to our card base, and then we'll we'll add our greeting, and we'll you know what? Actually, I'm gonna add my greeting first. Um, so my greeting is gonna pop up right here between the uh, so succulent and the polished pink, and I'm gonna attach it with uh, dimensionals, and I'm actually going to have it. Oh, look at that whole nice happiness is a clean is a is an unused sheet of dimensional, right? <laughs> dimensionals. <laughs> I love my dimensionals. Okay. And the reason I love my dimensionals is because they add, as you might imagine, dimension to a project and it makes it look so much more professional when you have that little bit of shadow and that dimension popping off. So you can place this wherever you want. Um, I did hang it off the edge. Um, I'm actually going to trim off the excess uh, part of the label there. So I want to make sure my T isn't hanging off the edge because I don't want to chop off my T. Grab my little paper snips here. I'm just going to turn it over because then it's easy for me to see what's hanging out and I'll just nip that off. So we've got our label all set and we're going to add more dimensionals because, you know, we can. <laughs> we have a whole, whole sheet of a hundred dimensionals and that's not even counting all those little edges and a fresh pack has two more of these sheets in it dimensionals make me inordinately happy and i don't even know why but you gotta have the bling true story and it's a coming all right so we've got our piece here this one i am going to center on my card so again, that bottom portion was more white than the top, but once you get it on there, nobody's ever going to notice that. So we have our card here. We're just going to add an inside message, and we're going to add some embellishments. The embellishments I'm going to use are new. Surprise, surprise. And let me grab the uh, mini dimensionals here just so I can show them off a little better. These are called um, in-color jewels, and they are... Um, Similar to rhinestones, although they do have an iridescent coating on them. So can you see when I tilt it in the light there how you get all sorts of different colors showing up? Um, but of course it is the five in colors that are, are used for these. So we're going to use a, uh, a large and a small for every one of our butterflies and just put that in the middle. Now again, remember that shimmer vellum is uh, got a little bit of a kind of a, it's more like a plastic than a paper, um, that finish on it. So you're going to want to uh, give them a good press once you put them on so that they don't go anywhere. Now, if you don't have the in color jewels, um, they actually are, are already on back order. <laughs> they went on back order today when the catalog began. But again, you can put your order in and Stampin' Up! will ship it to you as soon as they come in to get back in stock. Um, but you could also take uh, a rhinestones and put those in the center. And if you have the in color um, Stampin' Blends, you could actually custom color all of your rhinestones in the in colors to match. Or you could leave them plain. I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. I do have a version with just rhinestones on it. We're all about options, right? We like to have lots of choices. 
Ooh, I skipped my fresh freesia. No worries. I won't, I won't miss it. I'll come back to it. And of course, I'm using my take your pick tool. I use this pretty much every, this is pretty one of, much one of my stamp, uh, my uh, stamp room staples. I think I use it for almost every project. It's great for this. It's great for poking out those little pieces on the dies. All right, so we've got them all on there. I'm just going to press them all so none of them go missing. All right, so there we have the In Color Jewels, which are just lovely. And let's go ahead and add our sentiment. And I hope you didn't have trouble finding me tonight. I did go live in my... Um, on my, on my page instead of our Sue Stanfield group. And then I attempted to share it to the group. So I'm hoping that you're able to find me. So I'm going to use this sentiment from the Quiet Meadow, which is heartfelt love and caring thoughts are with you. Um, that goes with our thinking of you sentiment. I'm going to go back to that uh, polished pink ink pad and just add that to the center. Um, for decorating it further, uh, this little splatter sp stamp is really fun. I'm going to just do that for just a splash of color. Now, if you wanted to, you could actually stamp this little flower in all five of the in colors on the inside. That would be fun to do, too. I'm going to leave it uh, with the splatter stamp here. Um, because I get a little nervous stamping inside a finished card <laughs> on the camera in case I mess it up. And I didn't, so I'm going to go with it. <laughs> so there we have our in-color card. Quick and easy to put together. Now I did do a little die cutting ahead of time, but it is pretty quick and easy um, die cutting to do. So let me show you a couple different versions of this card um, that I had mentioned. So this is what it looks like with rhinestones. Still very pretty. And again, if you wanted the color you, and you didn't have the in-color jewels, you could certainly use uh, the in-color blends and, and color those rhinestones yourself. And then let me show you another version. I know uh, the last class that I did was uh, the Butterfly Brilliance class, and you guys loved it. <laughs> Thank you for all the kind um, feedback on that class. So I did do this card with the Butterfly Brilliance, or the Brilliant Wings dies um, from that bundle. And so I did exactly the same technique. I just cut the detailed butterfly out of the strips of paper. Now, when doing this card, um, or with this butterfly, you can't cut multiple at the same time because this die is more detailed, so you cut one at a time, which is fine if you're doing one card. I was doing a lot of cards to prep this for my team, so I did go with the other butterfly, um, but I, I like, I think both versions are, are quite lovely, actually. So, um, so that's just some more options for you. Um, I did just send out, hopefully you are subscribed to my Sue Stampfield newsletter. I will post the link here on my page um, if you're not currently subscribed to that. Uh, I did send out some uh, project sheet today for this, um, a free project sheet for this set of cards. Um, so that should have just arrived in your inbox. And also the information about my upcoming Pansy class is in that email. And um, so check that out. And then there is another um, some, there's some fun in-color stuff in there, and uh, there is another um, project sheet as well. So thank you so much for joining me. I uh, hope you have a great rest of your night. I'm going to flip the camera so I can say goodbye. Get that out of my stand there. you see my ceiling and my light. There we go. Thanks so much for joining me tonight. I hope you have a great evening, and we'll see you next time. My next video will be on Saturday on my YouTube channel, so if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, I would love for you to do that, and then you won't miss anything. It will give you notifications when I have a new video uh, up for you to watch. So Saturday morning, 10 a.m. Central Time will be my next video. And if you have any questions about the products in the new catalog um, and placing your order, please let me know. Love to answer questions. Take care, everyone. Have a great night. Bye-bye.